Greetings my fellow sci fighters it's I Super Sci-Fi Dude, and today I'm going to talk about my opinion on the Sonic the Hedgehog fan film by Blue Course Studios, and why I think it did a better job at being a adaptation of Sonic the Hedgehog than its uh, runner-up, Sonic 2020. Now, I'm hopeful for Sonic 2020 to get a better design and to at least feel and look more like Sonic. But until I get a full confirmation of what he's going to look like and if he looks better and that he looks better, I'm not feeling too hopeful for this movie. So let's get started talking about this one. You gotta get this out of the way. Cup River Sega, blah blah blah. Yeah, we get it. Okay, note one. Despite the fact that the first song you hear in this trail trailer or a little mini project or whatever you call this thing. Despite the fact that not being from a Sonic game, it still gets you pumped up for what you're about to see. Unlike Gangster's Paradise, which wasn't from a Sonic game, didn't fit the character, and just had nothing to do with it. Even though this barely has anything, doesn't really have anything to do with Sonic, other than it being in this fan film, at least it seems intense enough and cool enough to get you hyped up for what you're about to see. And this here was a nice way to reference the rings. Oh, and the Chaos Emeralds. I will... Okay, this is something that this film and the current film both have in common. They put, they picked a good voice for the Sonic character. They got Ben Schwartz for the theatrical one. They got Janiel White for this. I'll give them that. Pretty nice title screen to tell you what you're about to see. I ain't sure the current film's title isn't that bad. I do like the aesthetic of it. This one does seem a bit blander, but yeah. South Island, plenty of movies. A way to set up the uh, locations. Using things that were used in the game, such as Eggman's battleship from Sonic Adventure. Oh yeah, and these uh, E-102 Gamma, or whatever these robots are called from the games. Some pretty intense that. Atmosphere and uh, 
Yeah, and uh, have an Eggman have a fleet of these things, like in Sonic Heroes. You know, act, having them at least act kind of like the game versions and look like the game things. Which, you know, since they're at least trying to attempt to look more like what's in the games and reference stuff from the cartoons, that's better than what Gangsta's Paradise, Jeff Fowler, frickin' Sonic the Hedgehog 2020 has shown in its trailer and its promotional items and yada yada. One problem I do have with this though, it's way too slow to build up to what we want to see. You know, I'll admit, when I first watched this, I thought, I kind of thought not bad for a fan film. Then when I researched it, I kind of misread something and then thought that this was the actual film coming out. And I was like, that's the actual film? And funny enough, I originally thought if that was going to be the actual film, that would have been pretty bad. But I was wrong, because, you know, we got... Give me a second. We got this freaking nightmare. Yeah. In contrast, the model that they use in this actual freaking... Actual freaking video... Looks much better. Mobius represents unity, a time in which all nations can function in a unified harmony. And it, okay, here's another thing that this movie did better than what the trailer show in that Sonic 2020 movie. Having a reason for it to have both humans and Sonic in the same world. Sure, they say that, you know, in the 2020 trailer, um, or in the 2019 trailer, whichever one you want to call it, that Sonic's from another world, basically, by him saying, so basically, I'm going to have to save your planet. That ticked me off so freaking much, because if he's from another world, why would he need to blend in with ours? Think about it. He could be from another world and as cartoony as Frick. He could be from another dimension if he cartoony as Frick. Unless he's actually supposed to be a creature that actually lives on Earth and is trying to be real because it actually belongs there and it's not out of the norm for that world. That I can get trying to look like it's belonging, but it still doesn't work when you do it to that degree. But this, even though it, it's saying that it's referencing planet Mobius, which is where Sonic's from. It's saying that Mobius is Earth, unified, and that all the nations in the world are getting along, and yet there just so happens to be these talking animals that just so happen to live there. With the same goal, the betterment of the future and mankind. This represents the first threat to this universe. Various sources have theorized that the attack was orchestrated by acclaimed roboticist Dr. Julian Kintober. His whereabouts have been unknown for the last... Also, another nice reference. Julian Kintobar. Which is... Kintobar is robotic backwards. Two months. Wanted for questioning for crimes against humanity. South Island is home to some of the... Oh, this would be something that I would want to put in my Sonic movie. Re either reference references to or cameos by people who are fans of Sonic by either playing the games, reading the comics, and have made it big on YouTube. You know, like what they did here. They had James Roll cameo as a news anchor. I'd have him cameo as a guy playing video games. Sonic would probably crash through his window. I'd be like, I don't know. You'd probably say the one curse word in the movie and be like, what the age? And Sonic would be like, sorry, man, got him run. Most intelligent animal life on Mobius. 
many are still speculating what Kintober's intentions are in eliminating all life on the island. Julia and Kintober. Okay, here's another positive for this. A better design for Eggman. Sure, it looks cheap and not exactly accurate, but at least it's a bald dude in a red and yellow suit with go goggles, a freaking mustache all the way through the thing, and, you know, trying to act all menacing instead of, nope, wrong. Are you in charge here? You know, blah, 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 along with it. You get the point. Don't get me wrong. Jim Carrey is at least going to be hilarious as Eggman or Robotnik or whatever name they're giving him in this. I'm just saying, I would have picked Danny DeVito over, uh, over freaking Jim Carrey to play Eggman. You know why? Well, one, he's uh, lacking in the top hair. Two, he's round enough to fit for Dr. Robotnik and... He'd be hilarious just going like, oh, ho, ho, ho. think you could stop me, Sonic, and it would fit, you know what I'm saying? He is no more. I am now Robotnik. Robotnik. I represent the perfection the society needs. I envision a society under a soul leader. My society. My leadership. We have no choice but to retaliate. GUN units are being deployed. Another nice reference. Instead of just having a random military be like, six hours ago, power got shut down throughout the entire half of the United States. We gotta go catch this thing, and we only got one guy who can handle this. And it being the Robotnik wannabe, and... GUN... You already have a dadgum military force in the Sonic Cannon. G, you win. Just go with that. And instead of trying to make Robotnik like, work for these guys, have him be the bad guy that Sonic chases after, not the freaking thing that chases after Sonic and then Sonic, and then they figure out that Robotnik's a bad guy and then Sonic's not the bad. You get the point. As we speak, an effort to combat the threat of Kentober's forces. I mean, come on, that's a cool shot. Okay. If you could combine the ideas of how they implemented the stuff from the games in this. And the way that they designed Sonic, with the high budget of a Hollywood movie. I'm pretty sure you could get, and just to add a little bit more comedic and hilariousness into it, I'm pretty sure you could get a good movie. But I do like how intimidating they're trying to make their Robotnik here. All right, here we go. Finally getting Sonic in four minutes and 56 seconds into this eight minute and 30 second video. We finally get Sonic's a voice. World, a place where you can just kick back, just enjoy everything around you. Freedom. <laughs> then imagine seeing all that taken away because one bloated Eggman wanted it all. Uh, see, he even called him Eggman. Even though when he's going by Robotnik, Eggman used to be the insult Sonic would call him. But then he, Eggman just kind of took on the name... Anyway, I'm surprised, you know, I can still do the voice. And if he can still do the voice when this thing came out, why is it they never got his voice for generations? I mean, or forces. Come on. Well, someone has to get all that back, and it's going to be me. I'll tell you everything. How it got this way, and how I'm going to make sure it... Yeah, doesn't this shot feel familiar if, you're only, if you've only seen the 2020 or 2019 trailer? Even the guy who made this reacted to that, and he had like text say, "This looks familiar." Goes back. Just try to keep up since I moved. So that means the people who made that freaking trailer, who said okay to that design, saw this and said, "Yeah, we can do better, and we can rip you off in a scene." Very quickly. <laughs> Gotta go fast, right?
And there's your nice little cameo by Doug Walker, aka Nostalgia Critic. This is your last chance. Have you seen the blue blur? Answer the question or face the consequences. <laughs> well, okay, time for you to die. That shot right there, very similar to uh, the shot in the, you know, when you just start up the game of Sonic Adventure, and it plays that one part where D102 Omega shoots his gun. You don't have a line, just look either depressed or angry. Okay, our first action scene in the movie. Okay, I also like the reference to Way Past Cool. And what I'm going to talk about here is how much better this design is than the one we got. For one, it stays true to what people think when they hear the name Sonic the Hedgehog. It looks like him. You can tell the inspiration just by looking at it. You can see the silhouette of the original Sonic standing right there if you made it all black. The only difference being, they made the fur textures more realistic, and they made the mouth only move in the center. Why couldn't Jeff Fowler think of doing this? Or at the very, if you're gonna make his, okay, it would've been fine if you did this, but made his arms blue and hairy, and maybe change the shoes. That would've been fine. Would've been perfectly fine. But, frickin', frickin', Frickin' 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 fr This is what you land on when you try to make a sonic design? This? Frickin' this? With the separating the eyes and... Oh, It ain't one even really gonna give him socks originally. This is... Just... Mmm! You notice how his reaction isn't ah! It's more like That's kinda weird. Kinda awesome. That's what the what you should have the fans be more like. See look, look, he was amazed at that. Mm. drones entered a firefight with a gun squadron on South Island. The blue blur came to the rescue when he destroyed all... Okay, I will admit, it does take itself a bit too seriously. And I do want it to lighten up, crack more jokes, and be funny. But I do like how menacing the villain's trying to be, and how imposing it is. ...in a matter of seconds. This marks the eighth time this mysterious hero has rescued a gun squadron in a jail. The Empire is looking out for your best interest. Order and structure is the key to Utopia. So who's this guy meant to be? Snively? We're all are equal. The Utopia where faith in machines and robots... We'll make, and that, beyond... we'll make more sense than that current robot, the freaking lackey, whatever the heck his name is. I'm just gonna call him Mr. Translator, because that's all he did in that trailer. Just translate and gawk at him. And be in the background. $20,000 reward has been issued for any information leading to the identity or arrest of the Blue Blur. The Blue Blur is currently wanted for insurrection against the Robotnik Empire. Various theorists believe that the Blue Blur is a remaining non-human South Islander, but those rumors were shot down by Robotnik in this statement. They're all extinct. Yeah, sure they are, you rotund egghead. Blue Blur's first act of insurrection took place approximately three weeks ago. 
Okay, if it's not one of these South... This is a question I have about this. If it's not one of those South Islanders that you call them, that's what they call the um, animal characters, and then how do you explain that you call it the blue blur because it moves real fast and it's blue and no human can run that fast? The robot, the robots look way more original and more game themed, more like something you'd actually expect Eggman to make, rather than Transformer knockoffs numbers one and two in the uh, trailer with Gangster's Paradise. So, you've seen it? I don't know what it is. I barely got a good look. You were there. You saw plenty. Tell me what. You do realize you got the blue blur because it moves so fast. It's a daggum blur. How is someone supposed to tell you what it looks like if it looks like a blur? It is. No. Ah, you man. I do like how this Robotnik's trying to look like the classic one. What? Humanity used to be a God-given right. Now it's a privilege. You follow the rules, I allow you to keep it. But when you don't, you must lose your humanity. This is like a live-action version of the Sad AM Eggman. Which is one of the most intimidating versions of the fat, rotund egghead I've ever seen. I don't know anything. Please, don't. Prep our friend for roboticization. He's even got the cape. Come on. How's it this, these guys can keep better designs and better looks for their characters than a high-budget act, live-action film? I get, it's an adaptation. It's gonna look different enough to be its own thing. No, if it's too, so different, it's its own thing to where you can't even recognize the character as who it's meant to be. You can't expect it to get, do good because you're trying to aim at the fans, but you're also trying to get new ones into the fandom. But ugh, and yet there's some kids excited for this movie. I'm hoping that redesign saves it and that freaking Jim Carrey can at least make it bearable to watch. This is the most angry I'm getting. The, the, this will be my angriest freaking video. No! You goddamn monster! All of this will end soon. If we don't take you down, the blue blur will. I saw this does have a nice reference to the robot association. I forgot to mention in my fit of rage. And here we have our GUN agents. Not bad outfits and decent enough for what they're trying to portray. On such a low budget. Can we make it from here? Any closer and they'll spot us. Honestly, I would hire Blue Core Studio to help me make some live action films. And I'd actually give them a budget and see what they could do with it. I don't want to be here all day. Take aim. Cover him. I hope this works. Just watch. Shut it. Buzz bombers! They know we're here. Freeze. Leave it. Run. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay, apparently gunfire doesn't have much effect on these robots, but a freaking bop on the head does. See, look how much better that looks. Sure, the, the fur makes it look weird. I, But in contrast to what we got, this really is a better option. It's got the gloves, it's got the shoes, it's got the look, it's got the eyes, it's got everything it needs to be a good Sonic. Oh, yeah, and another thing... 
I'm wondering why they gave Sonic lightning powers in the uh, theatrical Sonic the Hedgehog. Other than... Hold up, let me... Other than in a dadgum lightning shield, have a, I've never seen Sonic in a frick with lightning around him other than this little situation that you're seeing on the screen right now. This is the only time he's ever had lightning around him except in the other games where this little power-up pops up. Is that what they're referencing? I mean, what the heck is going on? Man, Sonic's so fast again, you can barely catch a glimpse of him when he goes by. Okay, wait. And nice little sound effects from the games, sure, yeah. That was the one thing they got in that trailer. They did get some sound effects from the games and for the little spin dash. Pretty cool that he's using his homing attack here. And look at that! Cartoony looking shoes. Rather than Pumas or frickin' Jordans or some sort of licensing, some sort of frickin' ad for some sort of shoe company. And they work. Because you're not trying to force them onto something that they don't belong on. Yep. I know, I know. I can make quite an entrance. You know, I can come back and do that again. <laughs> an islander. The blur. The blue blur. Pretty sure you've heard of me, considering I'm number one on Robotnik's hit list. Another nice reference. Robotnik. And come on. It. I, I mean... One thing I can handle... They're probably going to make a lot of... You know, Sonic's catchphrase isn't gotta go fast, Jeff Fowler. It's way past cool or something like that. Wait, gotta go fast is a Sonic X intro. Blue Blur is cool, but you go, Sonic. <laughs> See something you like? Uh, no, oh, not. I mean, you're pretty and all, but. Nice little reference to Sonic's human girlfriends. And that it's a bit weird and ewy. No! <laughs> You're a hedgehog. And proud of it. Sounds like more are coming. I'm gonna go and have some fun. Catch you guys next. Now that's the attitude I hope to see out of Ben Schwartz's Sonic. I think Ben Schwartz is at least gonna have a good time and have a easy time portraying the attitude and voice of Sonic. Like, I did like a few lines from there, like, ho ho, is that all you get? And, hey, look at this, I took 9,000 steps today. Or, you know, just all these little gags about like how fast he is, or like his attitude and all that. I love that. I just wish it had a better design. Time. Which I'm hoping this new design delivers on. Hoping. Jeff Fowler, and people making that movie, I better be impressed. We all better be impressed. And look at that. Some more cartoonic variations, live action variations of cartoonic robots. And they work too. You don't have to make them all look like Transformers knockoffs. <laughs> See, look at how well they portray the character of Sonic the Hedgehog and now... I mean, man, I wish this had a higher budget so it could look better. That's all the problem is. It's got a low budget. How's it this get... 
how's this low budget very how's this low budget YouTube video do a better job with the design and feel of Sonic the Hedgehog than a high budget Hollywood? That's that's my question. If I were a director, which I'm aiming to be when I grow up, so I could show these hacks like freaking Michael Bay and Jeff Fowler and all these other freaking jerks how it's done. Again, some more cartoonic, some more uh, actual gamed, you know, you know what I'm saying, they're actually from the game. I mean, this is just way past cool for something at such a low budget. <laughs> and this is sort of a Sonic X reference. Okay, I'm hoping that the movie that that uh, Jeff Fowler is directing has some little jokes and references to okay so they reference Green Hill Zone right I hope they walk into a chemical plant and it's it says chemical plant Z dash one but it's spelled O N E but Sonic reads it as chemical plant zone and then someone correct his, corrects him on it it's chemical plant Z one that'd be a nice little joke to put in yeah! Right. <laughs> it's go time! I mean, come on, look at this is awesome! It's way past cool! Okay, whoever owns Blue Core Studios, if you're still around, or if you're at least your company's still around, and people are running it and they're still making quality videos like this. When I, could, when I become a director, I'm hiring a bunch of your staff to come and work on my, help me with my projects. <laughs> Kaboom. So, yeah. I'm, uh... Here and there, I've said different reasons why I think this does better than frickin' Gangster Sonic. Need him. He'll give us a fighting chance. You can't be serious. Gun needs him. After everything Sonic did, I'm sure the commander. The only thing it's lacking is some decent comedy moments. Sure, I mean, there's a few here and there, like Robotnik and, you know. Little things that Sonic says about being goofy that are goofy. That's all it's really missing. She's right, Anthony. But to be fair, it's only on eighteen side. minutes. Front, he may be on our side, but can we trust him? I think we all know that he's one of them. One of what? A South Islander. We don't know anything about him. You saw what he did. Could be a show. Luckily, it ain't your decision. We know our enemy. A freak. A South Islander. Priorities have shifted. Kill the hedgehog at all cost. If you could mix this intimidating Eggman with the comedic and attitude-filled Sonic and have this design but upgraded with a higher budget you could have an awesome movie. Get his image up immediately. 
A reward increased to $100,000 and incarceration immunity has been issued for any information that can lead to the arrest of the blue blur, who has been identified as Sonic. This security photo was taken moments ago in the outskirts of the Green Hill Zone where he was last spotted. I thought we contained all South. And nice reference to that. Uh, uh, nice reference to Green Hill Zone. And actually using Why Green Hill Zone, alive? unlike. If this thing is still alive, for there game. may be more. There's no room for his kind. I don't want a thorough search of the island. And as far as this Sonic, I want the majority of the forces concentrated on him. Oh, Can you not see that I am not in the mood for any more nonsense? I think this will lift your spirits. Okay. That makes three. Four more to go. <laughs> okay, that's a bit of crazy acting there. I mean, but that's kind of what I would expect out of Eggman. Either going full villain or full goofy villain. If he's going full goofy, goofy villain, he should at least look like him. And look. The way that he moves is just look. Sure, it's a little chop, but he's doing Sonic poses, like. And he's doing, like, little things that Sonic would do, like rubbing his finger underneath his nose and. posing with attitude. Sure, Ben Schwartz's Sonic did a bit of that, too, but. This one looks better than that, and it's sad. It said this is a better adaptation than a Hollywood film. I can do better. I could honestly do better if I was given that high of a budget and a whole team of people that both animate it, help me script it, and freaking voice act in it. I could do better. That's the sad thing. And I'm just a 17-year-old kid. If you gave me that kind of stuff anytime and give me however long it usually takes to make a movie like this, I can do better. Oh, and another thing nice about this one? Uses a song from the game that people are nostalgic for. If you're trying to cash in on nostalgia... Then why even make it look new and make it look like the version everybody knows? If you're only trying to freaking get the new generation, why try to reference things from the older generation? Like you're trying to get the old fans in. I wish this thing got a full budget, was able to make a full, I got a high budget as, as much as it needed to look better, a theatrical re release, and a full runtime. This would have made a better Sonic movie than the Jeff Fowler one. And yeah, we got, and so far, we haven't had another character even mentioned in the new Sonic movie. It's just Sonic, Eggman, and some random cop, his girlfriend, and the military. Okay, yeah, hey, why not? Yeah, okay, fine. Sure, uh, yeah, let's not have uh, Sonic's best friend Tails, or Knuckles the Echidna, or Shadow the Dad. Okay, if it's not Eggman that Sonic's trying to save their world from what is it is it chaos is it something else or is it Eggman because for some dang reason ugh, I'm confused let's just end this video out with a cool little bit of animation Alright, 
that's gonna do it for this video. See you dudes in the next one. Jeff Fowler, take notes! And shout out to Blue Core Studio. Go check their videos out. They made a Mega Man live action parody. They, oh, this and the Mega Man one's all I really know about. Know about. Just go check them out. See you dudes in the next one.